Now that you're done with the opening of the game and escaping at a Hyrule Jail, it's time to have the perfect start in Echoes of the Wisdom from getting hearts to getting extremely broken Echoes that can do so many things in the game like this and this to even accessories that are guarded by powerful enemies. And we'll start right as we enter Southern Beach. From Southern Beach, you have to head over to this location, past these enemies, where you'll find your first heart piece over here by crossing this little area. After that, you'll make a pathway that brings you inside of this cave over here, where you'll then make your way to the second heart piece. Once you exit this cave, you can make your way over to Southern Village, and at Southern Village, you can then purchase another heart piece, which will bring your total to three. Once you get that heart piece, you you can make your way over towards this cave over here where you'll be able to get your fourth heart piece and once you have four heart pieces that's going to form a completely new heart piece for zelda bringing your total heart count to four if you enter this cave over here and get all the way to the back once you throw an igniso into the other flame part you'll then have access to a chest that gives you a fairy bottle and there's actually total four of these in the game and in this video i'm going to be showing you how to specifically get two at the start now, of course, you're going to need a fairy to go with that fairy bottle. So you can head over to this specific spot right over here, this little pond where a fairy will spawn and it'll jump right into the bottle. The reason why this is so important is because when an enemy hits you and you take a lot of damage, the fairy will come out restoring your hearts. Anytime you consume your fairy, you can return back over to this pond if it has respawned. Also, there is a very good early game echo located right over here inside of this little cave here. This is going to be the pea hat. So to get this, just simply burn it because it's very weak to fire but when you have it it's going to be very useful in dealing a lot of damage and even clearing out groups of enemies because how it spins now after you do the first dungeon learn your bind ability use your bind ability on that shadow link in order to take off the shield from him and beat him up and then eventually going to the boss and using the bind ability non-stop on the boss and then beating up the boss with the sword fighter form and completely clearing the dungeon to get another heart which will bring your total to five hearts and getting tried to level up which will allow you to now throw out four echoes at a time it's now time to move on to the overworld after leaving Luberry's house and the quest initiates that says searching for everyone. This will then give us access to the open world. Now, as you first exit out, one of the first echoes that you're going to see is going to be a spider to the right on the pillar in this location. This spider is known as the Crawlchula and is one of the most broken echoes in the game. The first thing you want to do is lock onto it and then press your bind ability. This will keep the Crawlchula in the air and then you can select your echoes and send out a bunch of bats in order to take it out and once you have it you're good to go from that point you're going to proceed a little further in the middle of all these little pillars on your map and you'll notice that there is a heart piece on top of this platform clear out the enemies in the area then set a bed down below and here's exactly how you're going to work your crawlchula what you want to do is open up your echo menu and then you're going to place down the crawlchula by pressing y after that you're then going to make sure the crawlchula is facing the direction that you want to go and then you're going to press the r button to follow it which is basically reverse Spawn, so that way you go into its direction if you do this correctly your crawlchula should go across that bed and go all the way up this pillar and then grab the heart but just so you know this also applies to any walls in the game including the elden volcano walls you can even aim up this wall and literally look at the spider go all the way up hebra mountain It'll stop for a second and it still goes. You can even use it to climb into Farren wetlands just like this. Basically go anywhere. So if I mention the location, just know that the Crawlchula Echo is the one that helped me get there. After this, go straight and then turn left. And you should see the notification that you're in Hyrule Field. Feel free, by the way, to pick up any echoes, even if I don't mention it in the video, as, you know, the whole point of this game is to collect echoes. Hit any waypoints or save points you see along the way. And then you're going to make a left into this area, so which should look like a complete area surrounded by green icons. Once you walk in here, you'll find a pea hat, another very OP echo, protecting a heart piece on top of the stump. What you can do is bait it to go around the tree and then wrap around just like this. Grab your trampoline whoop, and you should be able to grab this heart piece just like that. You can then exit out of this area. Now from this location, you're then going to follow this road and make your way all the way up to this Hyrule Castle Town warp point. There is a waypoint here so you can activate that while you're here. You then can enter into Hyrule Castle but not really cross the bridge and then go to the right and we're going to completely rotate around.
and then you'll find another heart piece just sitting here. From here, you're just going to start heading towards the left side so you could just jump in the water and keep going towards this direction. Again, feel free to grab any echoes that you see on the way if you feel like it. Then continue going left, you should see a sign that is kind of your waypoint and we'll be bumping into another heart piece right over here. Now, you know the trick, throw out your crotchula, bind onto it, and then follow it up. And just like that, you now have your fourth heart piece and you have gained another heart, bringing Zelda's total hearts to six hearts. Now, we're going to continue going towards the left and follow this road. until we arrive in Kakariko Village. Now, once you are in Kakariko Village, there is a quest that you should initiate immediately. If you go ahead and talk to this lady over here, you're going to initiate the quest Kukos on the Loose. And your goal is to basically find all five. Here are the locations where I find all of them. One over here, this one located in this spot, this one over here, one here and the final one is located all the way on top of this windmill over here so just use trampolines or whatever echoes you need to get on top of there grab the cuckoo and bring it down once you have all the cuckoos returned to the farm you'll then be rewarded with your second fairy bottle which means there are only two more left in the game that you need and having two emergency fairies inside of the fairy bottles is going to be very useful if you get hit by an enemy and almost die hey real quick if you enjoyed these echoes of wisdom videos then you should probably echo that like button and the subscribe button you know bring it back and come back anytime you want to the channel like you can bring out an echo okay let's get back to the video now also in kakariko village there is going to be a shop in the bottom right corner that you can head over on into and in the back of the room you're going to find an object that you can purchase which is the climbing band which is basically a leather band that protects your wrist and you can wear it to climb ladders and rocks and walls faster now this isn't game breaking you can just get this to add it onto your equipment now if for some reason you can't afford anything in the game and it seems to be too expensive well let me tell you about the money glitch or common sense depending on what kind of person you are watching this video and the trick is really simple all you have to do is go into your settings select amiibo and from there you're just going to tap three amiibo like this one hit the amiibo again two hit the amiibo again and three after this, you'll be getting most likely 15 items of a specific material that's in the game. And from there, you want to go to your settings and then go towards date and time. From date and time, you're just going to pop it up just like that by one day. This will then allow you to once again, just scan the amiibo over and over again to keep getting the goods. Just like this. There's my twisted pumpkins. And literally, you just need three Zelda Amiibos to do it. If you want more details about the Zelda Amiibos, I have a whole video talking about it. But this is just a little bit of a glitch. From this point, then you can talk to any shopkeeper and you can sell all the items that you have gotten from doing this. And uh, you can probably then afford whatever is in the shop. I'm glad that helps. Now you know what to do in case you need it. And once you sell all your Amiibo items to the shop owner, you should have enough to buy something just like this over here. And we'll buy it. And then whatever accessories you have, you can go into your equipment and then equip it on. Now, a quick side note, if you do come across more accessories while playing the game and you need room in your inventory, all you have to do is head over to Lake Hylia located over here. Walk inside. Grab any of these fairies that you see for your bottles and then just talk to the great fairy. And you're not going to believe what you have to do in order to get more equipment slots in the game. That's right. All you have to do is simply just buy it when you hit make me more stylish and she'll increase the price by a certain amount. Now you know. Anyway, going back to Kakariko Village, make sure that you do activate the waypoint over here. And then from here, what we're going to do is make our way up this volcano area, the Elden Volcano, which is going to be right north of the village. This is really cool because all you have to do is face the wall directly from the Kakariko Village, throw out your handy dandy Crawtula just like this, bind onto it, and then reverse bond. And it should take you all the way up 
the Elden Volcano with absolutely no problem. It'll stop and then here it is. It's going to keep going. Now, if there's any enemies along this wall, it's actually going to merc them and take them out completely. So you shouldn't have to worry about any enemies here. And then finally, it'll bring you all the way to the top. Now, once you arrive at the top, you'll find another waypoint. You can activate that and now you can come back to Elden Mountain whenever you want. But we're here for a specific purpose. Now, from this point, what you want to do is climb up these steps to go around this spot as this guy and you're gonna see things exploding in the corners now you don't get access to bombs until the gerudo temple or dungeon so we're gonna kind of speed run getting access to bombs by focusing on catching one of these guys so lock on to it then throw out try to bind it and from there you're then going to just send a horde of bats to attack this enemy just like this because he cannot do anything about it and once you defeat it you'll then have the zero echo which will allow you to bomb anything with cracks in it which can reveal treasure or special pathways now while we're here we're also going to just grab one more echo along the way so just continue going left from where all these guys are throwing down bombs also, while you're here, make sure to pick up the Fire Octorok. It's good to have an elemental range unit as well. So just something to keep with you while you have already visited Elden Volcano. And we're going to continue going towards the left side over here. Then we're going to make our way up like this, past the Zolfos, and past the Fire Octoroks. And then you're going to touch this waypoint and enter into this building or this little cave. Over here, you'll notice that there are these stone-like creatures, and we're actually going going to add them to our little collection the trick to getting this is basically holding them with try and then allowing the zero to just bomb them after that you'll defeat it and you'll be able to learn the tweeless echo now that we have the best echoes in the Elden Volcano area, we're going to now make our way south to grab something really special that's going to make our traveling a lot easier, especially with platforming. So go to the edge over here, bring out anything you have that can fly, grab onto it and just start to head all the way down south. Just follow me as we continue heading towards the south area and then eventually we will be bumping into a little cave entrance right over here. If it's your first time in the Gerudo Desert, it will play the cutscene, but otherwise you should be fine to just go ahead and enter into this cave right over here. As soon as you walk in, you're going to have these tiles come out of the floor and try to attack you. So what you want to do is you can either bind it to freeze it in place or just quickly learn it as it's approaching you. Literally, look how you could just hop on this tile and it just flies across. Very easy to bridge gaps by getting on top of this thing and can save you a lot when you use this later on in dungeons. And if you proceed further into this cave and do the little puzzles, they're very simple. You'll just get a chest that has a hundred rupees in it and that's a lot of money for something very simple. Once you're done getting your flying tile echo, you can then warp back to Hyrule Castle. From Hyrule Castle, you're then just going to head towards the east direction and follow me and the pathway that I'm going. And if you're curious, we'll be now using the Twi'lis we got from Elden Volcano at this next location. Once you see a sign, that means you arrived at the location. You'll have another waypoint that you can go ahead and activate. And this will bring us towards this temple area, which is very interesting. Just climb up these steps. There will be a moblin, sword moblins here. If you don't have those echoes, feel free to grab these guys. Then head up further into this area. You'll then talk to this NPC outside and you'll get the side quest called Let's Play a Game. When you enter into this building, it's going to be very electricity based. And remember the Twi'lis I told you to grab earlier? earlier in the Elden Volcano area. Well, inside of here, a lot of electricity. As you can see, you can get hit by these very easily. And Twi'lises, without you using any potions, can take out these guys with absolutely no issue. As you can see, they're just like cornering it up. And just like that, you got it. And you'll probably also just get their echo, which is known as a spark. After this, you could proceed further inside of this entire area. You can use the sparks on these little devices here by just chucking them inside of it to activate. And you can keep going deeper in. It's really simple once you actually have the spark. Do the same thing over here if you need to elevate yourself just like this with the bed and throw the sparks in here which will then open up the next room if you go to the right room you'll grab yourself 50 rupees pretty much i'll let you go through this entire area on your own but when you do defeat the boss of this temple and come back outside you'll then be given the ancient charm which is going to reduce damage taken by about 25 percent after you're done over here all you have to do is follow me as we head out of here so i'm just going to get my crawtula and we're going going up just like this and we're gonna head down towards this direction here
You then can save at this waypoint over here and you'll arrive at this building that's locked that'll say I'm out wandering. If you're wondering what this building is, it's for automatons, which are extremely broken machines that are built later on in the game. If you're curious about that, I have a full video on my channel explaining that. But minus all that, so what you want to do is place yourself exactly where this red cogwheel is, face the wall, drop your spider, bind it, and then hit the R button to reverse bond and follow it and let it just do its thing. This is kind of crazy because it actually brings you all the way up <laughs> and you'll start to freeze. So just keep that in mind. You, If this is your first time up here, you'll get a notification from Try saying that it's extremely cold and uh, you should bring out something warm. And if you want to stay warm here, this is the way to go. You can just carry this little slime with you. And what you're going to do is just follow me as we go up in this direction. So we pick this up here, throw this here. And what you're going to enter now is a camp of level two moblins very dangerous creatures but we're actually going to get them here the strat here is to electrocute them so we can keep something out over here put this and then you can let your octorok get to work while they constantly get electrocuted so you can just switch in between these two if you don't want to do any damage to them if you don't have sword fighter form that's the best way to let this happen and just like that on the way here you have now learned the level two sword moblin. And the reason why I didn't get it anywhere else is because we actually have to be up here for a specific purpose. So just make sure you're staying warm while you're up here. Now you can choose to clear out the whole camp if you want, because it is a little dangerous. But what I like to do is just simply try to get past all these enemies by going towards the right side here. So I pick up my Igneezel and I'm just going to go here, melt this. Hopefully he doesn't catch up to me. And then once you do that, you can just head right up into this little cave over here. Now, when you arrive in this cave, there is going to be a very dangerous monster here. Now, when you go up to this level three Moblin, the simple strategy to beat it is just by going in circles around it, dropping your Octoroks. That way you'll be able to quickly defeat it and you'll be able to learn the level three Echo. Even though you can't use it, you'll have it. I made a whole nother video on all these level threes, but here you go. You can open the chest here once you defeat it and you'll get yourself the energy belt. Now, if you're curious what this energy belt is, it increases the likelihood that much more energy will appear when you defeat dark monsters. And if you're curious about dark monsters, those are the things that pop out of the rifts that are placed all over the map or when you're inside of a rift, when you defeat them, they drop the energy and that powers up that bar on the top left. After you're done with this area, you can go ahead and teleport right back to this location right south of where we are. When you arrive back, all you have to do is then you're going to face the wall to the east, get in your crawl chilla, and go in the direction it's heading towards. Or just let go and then let it face the wall and keep going. That's the way I run around with this thing. And then that should bring us by Jabul Waters. We're going to move a bit this way here so we can get maximum height. And while you're on these trees over here, you'll then see a wall down below where it has a crack. We're going to head to this wall and then we're just going to bring out our zero. Throw that out there. It's going to spit a bomb at that wall. And when it does that, there'll be a chest here. But this chest is going to have another accessory. And this accessory is the silver brooch that is going to make rupees appear a little more often when you break objects or defeat monsters. This is just a little bit uh, of a way that you could start money farming if you need to. Once you get this accessory, you're then going to go all the way back to the waypoint at the start of the game that is going to be in this location right over here before your first dungeon that you did. From this point, you're then going to want to bring out your Crawlchula again. As you notice, we're using this thing so many times because we are in the early game and we're going to make our way up these trees. So every time you need to face the trees, just unbind and rebind and crawl up here this will bring us over to this area but we're going to keep going and going because right below us is the farin region and just like that we've arrived at the farin region by jumping off thank goodness there is no fall damage now from here you can grab any echoes that you may see on the way or burn these webs to get into the treasure chest but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to keep going to get another special item. So just go all the way to the east. 
And when we arrive at this specific location right about here before these flames, there's going to be a creature here that's going to be really easy to get. You're just going to have to bind it and then pull it as hard as you can. And boom, this is going to be a Deku Baba level two. And what these things do is eat anything around it. So for example, if you wanted to use it right here and there's some new monsters here, I could throw them out and then hold the monster by binding it and he'll just eat them and he's gone. And then he spits it out and you can learn whatever enemy echo is in the area. That's pretty cool, actually. After you get the Deku Baba, you can go right past all these little slime ghosts and walk right inside of this cave. Once you're in this cave, you're going to head to the second spot right over here. Grab that. And that is going to be an enemy. If you have sword form, you can hit it from the back when you do that. Or if you grab that Moblin from the Hebra Mountain, you can then just take it out. And then you can learn this Armos Echo, which is pretty much this nutty defensive wall echo. Then you can climb up this ladder. There is going to be another enemy here and they shoot this like really annoying beam that does a lot of damage. And you can do damage to it. And what's going to happen is it's going to completely freeze just like that. And I've told you that you can get echoes when they're cracked. So here we go. Here is my zero. And it's going to just simply bomb it to finish it off. And you can also learn this echo as well, which shoots little pew pew beams. And this is the Beamos Echo. So now you have another cool echo to your collection. Anyway, our goal is to head all the way up here. So we're just going to go around the spot. Just follow me. Go all the way up. Go ahead and attack that so the gate unlocks so you can exit this place after you're done. And then climb up to the top. When you arrive at the top and go a little further, you'll see a very tough enemy. This is the Dark Nut Level 3, a very, very strong enemy. But just like the Moblin, if we defeat this, a chest is going to appear. So pretty much for this exact fight, you could just take out your Level 2 Sword Moblin and just keep summoning it over and over again to hit this Dark Nut Level 3. So it should be pretty easy. You could even grab on to the Dark Nut and have it ready for when you are able to learn it when try levels up. And you're going to just grab this chest over here and inside of here is going to be the spin brace which wearing this sturdy but light shoulder pad will enable you to knock back foes you hit with a spin this is what it looks like when i try spinning into an enemy like this nothing right but if we go ahead and equip it here's what it looks like you see that little stagger even the spiders kind of like stagger and, and you have a moment to get away from them so it'll make a uh, group enemy fights a bit easier to get out of situations if you're ever stuck like right there Boom. Now, if you head to the waypoint in front of the temple and make your way all the way towards the right side, you'll arrive at Seaside Village. And from this waypoint, you're just going to make your way all the way down south until you arrive at the ship. Once you arrive at the ship, you should see a shark on the bottom. But what we want to do is just quickly make a bed, make your way onto the ship, just like this. Then at this point, while you are on this ship, you're going to send some sea urchins out to do some damage. So just make sure not to fall off. There he is. He sees it. And then simply just drop your sea urchins onto the shark. And then after about 30 seconds, he should drop the echo and you can go ahead and learn it. And you'll have the Chompfin Echo now registered. The Chompfin is going to be a really good echo for you to use in the game because it's going to help in any dangerous water spots because first off, it costs four triangles. And it's one of the most powerful echoes in the game for using in the water. There's literally no underwater echo that can do better. Here's just an example of uh, some enemies right here that we'll probably be able to crush. Now that you have your perfect start in the game, you should check out this video right over here.